Hey, how you doing? This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. I turned my autofocus back on on my camera, and uh, I'm going to try it with autofocus one more time. Sometimes it drives you nuts, but it helps focus on whatever I'm trying to show you better instead of being fixed focus. So tell me what you think of having autofocus on. Anyway, I mentioned in a previous show that I got a new radio, a new old radio, a new used radio from Amazon. And that the packing was quite unusual. And here it is. This is what the radio came in. This is a tin box. It says Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm not sure what was in here before. It does have size 8 on the side of it. So, I don't know what it was. Maybe you could tell me what it was. But I thought it was quite unusual um, to ship a radio in something like this. But, it, you know, of course, it protected it. And we're going to open it up right now. And here's what's inside. Now, it was packed with a lot more packing material. So, I just, I just got a few pieces put back in here. And so, it was well packed with a lot of pet bubble wrap and everything, well protected. So here's what we have. Let me put this aside. And the gentleman, they're not in there now, the gentleman even sent me some brand new batteries to put in it. Which, you know, the, the metal tin plus the batteries really added to the shipping cost. But anyway, so those batteries are down inside now. And let's unwrap this thing. And I'll show you what it is. Let me put put this stuff away. That's pretty nice tin. I can put uh, coax adapters in here. That's pretty cool. Little bonus there. Get that down out of the way here. Okay, here's the radio. Let me zoom in here. Again, I got this off of eBay used. And of course, I'm getting a lot of reflections. And uh, this is a Sony model ICF-SW35. And this is more of a higher-end radio. I think they cost new when they first came out about $100. And now they're going for much over $100. So I got... I get a steal on this one. It it just one of those quirky things that it sold um, during the middle of the week and uh, nobody bid on it. It's not an out. If you look at the reviews, it's not an outstanding radio. As I mentioned, the uh, review in the Passport to World Band Radio, it only got two and a half stars out of five. Okay, so what I'm going to do, since it's more of a high-end radio than the $15 and the $20 radios I have been showing you, I'm going to go back to, let me find it here. I just had it there. It's not going to go. Okay, here it is. I'm going back to my report card system. Yeah, maybe the autofocus is not a great idea. So I jumped there. Um so this is a system I've used in the past on higher quality, uh, more expensive radios. And I go through and I judge the radio on these categories. Look and feel of the radio, the readability of the display and the controls and stuff like that, power options that are available, tuning, how well, it, how easy it is to tune, the audio quality, any special features that it has. And then after I do those, I do a separate show and I do reception testing. That might be difficult here right now because short, especially shortwave. Now, I typically don't, did I say typically three times in a row here? I, I usually don't test the AM and FM capabilities of these AM, FM shortwave radios. Because typically, here it goes again, that word's stuck in my head. 
Usually, and I use that already too. Oh well, most of the time, the AM and FM quality is good. The, you know, you can get, you can go to the dollar store and get a radio. And, and nowadays, the AM and FM quality is, it's just, it's good. It's, it, it's just, so I don't even test those features. You know, like, like this little guy right here that I tested recently. I didn't test the AM and FM capability. It's, it's a given. Okay, so that's, that's, so usually when I do the, re, here I go, usually again. Normally, when I do the reception testing, I just test the shortwave capabilities. That's what we're interested in. You know, we're interested in shortwave radios. Yeah, okay, they include for free AM and FM. No big deal. So that, it, and then I give it a final grade. So I usually do at least two shows. So anyway, we're going to use this form to take a look at this radio. All right, look and feel. Number one, look and feel of this radio. Um, now, in the past, Sony has always had very top quality shortwave radios, AM, FM, shortwave radios. Um, so there's, there's been no, what can I say? It, it's, it, you could assume it was going to be good quality. And the later models, um, maybe not as good. Maybe not as good. This one, I think I said, was about 10 years old. Came out about 10 years ago. It's, it's okay quality. Uh, not fantastic. So the look and feel... You know, the writing on, on it is very, very easy to read, even for me. It's not just tiny print. Um, the construction, you know, it feels pretty good. Uh, it doesn't have that flimsy feel. Even the telescopic antenna feels pretty sturdy, like it's not going to break off any minute. The uh, buttons and knobs, the connectors and everything have a good feel to them. So I'm going to give it... A B. I'm going to give it a B on look and feel. Um, so let's go on. The next thing is the readability of the display and the buttons, the lettering on the buttons. Okay, this radio, the display is a little small, a little small. Uh, it's blinking because I just put batteries in it and I didn't, didn't set the clock. Turn the volume down. Um, and let me, uh, let me see if I can zoom in for a second. Come on, camera. I got you on autofocus, so autofocus. And I was hoping it would be sharper than that. Anyway, so there's what it looks like. The display is a little small. The, it has, I think this is glass, so it's very reflective. I mean, you could almost use it as a mirror. Um, so that's a negative. Uh, without the backlight, it's a little dim, so you need quite a bit of ambient light to read it. The backlight on this radio, and this is a used radio, no, it's not brand new. Look at that thing, focus. Um, is, where'd it go? I know it was here a minute ago. Light. Okay, the backlight, and see if I can, see if you can even tell. Okay, I just turned it on. It is really weak. If I turn all the lights off, which would take a while, um, you could see it does come on. It's a green backlight or side light. I don't think it's really a backlight. Oops, I hit sleep function. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, get out of that mode. Okay. Um, the, the writing and everything, even though this is an older radio, I don't know how old this particular radio is or how much it's been used, but all the writing is intact. So it didn't wear off or anything like that. So as far as readability, neck, I'll give it a B. You know, this is a small radio, so they can't have the display do, be too big. It's got a matter of fact, it's got a fairly large speaker for the size of the radio. 
Okay, let's go to Power Options. It's run by either two or three, three AA batteries. Run by three AA batteries. And I gotta get the cover back on. Oh boy. There. There we go. So that's one option. Another option is it does have an input for a DC input. So an adapter requires 4.5 volts plus on the center. Pretty common adapter. Um, some of the Sony radios have um, special voltages. So you need their, their adapter or one that's easily changed so it's kind of got the typical power options i don't believe it came originally with a ac adapter i don't know that for sure but this one def definitely did not so power options uh, it's kind of just mediocre nothing special i'm gonna give it a c let me get over here to my Report card before I forgot, before I forget what I'm scoring it. So I believe I gave look and feel a B. I gave readability just a C. I gave power options just a C. It's just eh, mediocre, nothing special. Now, the next one is tuning. The ability to tune the radio. And... And this one um, has a couple options. It has no tuning wheel. There is no tuning wheel. This is the volume, no tuning wheel. Um, so you use these up and down buttons. And you can, uh, this button here, you can determine the increment of which it um, changes the frequency fast or slow and I think it's 1 kilohertz or 10 kilohertz so that would help a little bit but this is about it as far as tuning you've got a few numbers here but that's for addressing the memory the internal memory where you've stored frequencies so with this only being the option I'm not too impressed with tuning I I've used this and it's a little cumbersome. So you can you can uh, use this button here to jump around on the shortwave bands. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. So well, let me show you that right now. And like I say, the reflection is really terrible, so you're not gonna see and my lighting is not that good. Right about there, you can see the frequency. So it's on right now. And I'm going to hit the band button. It's at 17.79. Matter of fact, I've already hit the button. Now it's down to 17.23. And maybe I'm not on. Yeah, I'm on short wave. So why did that button not do anything that I thought it should do? Uh, that button doesn't seem to be working or I'm not using it properly. Oh, I know what it, that button, boy, when you get old, you don't remember much. That button switches it to the shortwave bands. And in this one, changes the bands. And I'm sorry for the poor lighting. No, I'm wrong about that too. It's like I originally thought. This switches, this one marked band, switches it between AM, FM, and short wave. This one, I thought, would change the short wave band, you know, like jump through the international bands. I've got, to, I've got a manual here and see if I'm. Um, done something wrong or that function doesn't work let's go down here and find 
Dun, 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 dun. I'm sorry, you know. Yeah, it says, just like I remembered, is, um, oh, it says, while pressing the SW band to select a meter band, then you press that other, the other button, other buttons, to jump up and down in the bands. So you got to, let me set this down, and I'll zoom in, uh, maximum zoomed. Okay, so I hold this down, and then I press this. Yeah, that that's how you do it. Gosh, I don't like that. You have to hold this button down called SW Band, and then you use, use these up and down arrows to jump through the international broadcast bands and then take your finger off that and then fine-tune it. That's how that works. Well, I wasted enough time on that. Oh, gosh. Okay, so that's what that button is. What were you even doing before I got off the track? We were talking about tuning. Okay, so I'm not too enthusiastic about the tuning. I like to have, a tu in addition to these buttons, I like to have a tuning knob. To me, especially, you know, you get to, because the one thing I noticed is that when I'm trying to fine tune this thing, I go into fine and it's only changing by one kilohertz, but I keep going back and forth between the up and down, up and down. It's like, you know, if I had just had a knob, okay, so I'm old school. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and grade it and I'm gonna give it, boy, I like to give it a D, but in all fairness, I'll give it a C. It does, it does tune with those buttons it does tune well. You just have to get used to using those buttons. Okay, the next one is audio quality. So let's see if I can give you an example of audio quality without getting into any copyright problems. So it's on, uh, there's not gonna be anything on shortwave right now, so let's go to AM. Oh, it also has long wave. So it's got long wave, um, short wave, and FM. So the long wave goes from 150 to 285 kilohertz. And then the short wave goes from 2.25 to 26.1. Pretty broad. So that's the band. Now, we're, so we're on long wave now. We want to go to AM. We're on AM. And uh, let's tune up here to a station I know about. Maybe that one. Turn the volume up. Only three times in the last three years, but he's a former 168-pound champ who's now comfortable at 175. He hasn't lost a fight amateur or pro in 20 years. Both fighters are... Th Trying to find some music real quick. Play a few seconds. Let's go to FM. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just... Shh, hush. Um, I'll just say the, the audio quality is very good. Very good. Um... I can only play that copyright stuff for a few seconds, I think. Just want to kind of stay away from that. And so I have to stay easy. <laughs> oh, boy. What the heck did that come from? Um, sorry about that. Oh, I got a flu shot yesterday. I think I got the flu this morning. No, nah, that's not true. Anyway, um, let me turn this. Off. What was I saying? Okay, so... Trust me, audio quality is very good on this radio, and that's typical of Sony radios. The audio quality is very good. Now, let's see. Let's go around and uh, see. We do have a tone control that's either news or music. 
I typically found those not too useful and I just use them uh, with the widest audio setting, typically. Now, if you get into tuning uh, shortwave, you might want to change that down to what's called news. So that's the only adjustment you have on the audio. Okay, so what are we going to? I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a B. It's not. Well, let me take in consideration something. Um, it's a small speaker. It's a small radio. I'm going to give it an A. I'm going to give it for those restrictions. I'm going to give it an A on audio. It, it is very, very clear. Okay, special features. Now, let's look around the radio and see if it has any special features um, at all. Okay, number one, if we look at the buttons here, this is an attenuator button here in the center. Turn attenuation on or off. And you can manually rotate this thing and adjust the attenuation. So it's not just on and off. You turn it on and then you can adjust the attenuation. So you're getting uh, some interference from a local station and you want to, and you're using an external antenna. It does not have an external antenna jack. Does not. Should. In this kind of quality radio, it should. So uh, that's the headphones jack right there. This side is a volume button and a tone button, and that is it as far as, uh, oh, this is this little handle thing, it's built in, built in. I really don't like these, but I guess you can cut it off. I don't think this is used as the FM antenna because you have this. This is a telescopic antenna. It's, eh, let's see, a special feature on it would be a long telescopic antenna. It's about three feet, and right now it's very stiff, so it probably wasn't used very much. Matter of fact, I don't think this radio was used hardly at all. Uh, other special features, it has 50 memories that you can store uh, the frequencies you found in those 50 memories. And that's what these buttons are. There are five pages with 10 memories each. So you push a button, it takes you to that page, and you continue to push that button to go through the 10 memories that are in that page. Okay, has that. Um, has a timer, a sleep timer. So you can set, uh, say, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, the radio will shut off after that period does have the fine and normal tuning, like I mentioned before. Has the clock, of course, which is blinking because I haven't set it. Uh, has a hold button, which means it disables the keyboard so you don't accidentally change the frequency or something else. Probably doesn't control the volume, though. And I think that's about it as far as special features. So, oh, it does have a kickstand. There we go. I love these radios that have kickstand because I like to view them on an angle. I don't, most of them don't stand up on their own. This one does stand up on its own. I said, I said most. I, I should say probably a number of them don't stand up on their own. This one does have some little. I almost said a bad word here. Uh, little things here uh, and this little part here to make it stand up better. So it does stand up. I call that a special feature. A lot of radios, especially smaller radios, they're rounded on the bottom and they just fall over. They won't stand up. So I'm, I think I'm impressed with the what I call special features. So I'm going to give it a B on special features. Um, now, these newer radios, since the technology has really uh, shot up, uh, I said shot up, um, 
like this guy, he has a ton of special features for $25. Now, the overall radio may not be that good, but it's got a lot of special features. So anyway, I'm going to give it a B. So right now, and this is a C, it's not a D. Uh, my handwriting is terrible. It looks like a B, B, about a B minus so far. So it could go down to a C if reception is not good. So we're going to see how the reception is. I may have to use my signal generator to do the reception testing since the bands right now, at least in my area, are pretty bad, pretty bad. So that's about it. Um, I probably have just glossed over some of the features and I may have to do another show on just features and using the radio besides the show for reception testing. I've already up to 25 minutes now, so I'm gonna cut this show short. Well, I can't cut it short, it's already over 25 minutes. If you have any questions, again, this is the Sony ICF-SW35 portable radio, long wave, AM, FM, and short wave. And I mentioned the frequencies that it will tune on short wave. I got this for, I think, $35. Um, they go as high as hundred and fifty dollars on eBay so if you enjoyed the show please give me a thumbs up I have a brand new radio it's not a new old radio it's a brand new radio I just got in a couple of days ago and I'll be doing a review of that and uh, I'm pretty excited about that one because that's a brand new radio it's been on the market for almost a year now but I've had have been having a problem finding a vendor that I like Amazon I normally use or eBay I've got it I've got it it's here now and I'll go into that and then we're going to do the reception testing of this radio thanks for watching stay warm bye-bye